welcome to Badgedamia, a podcast so educational two professors could be hosting it. Hi, I'm Dr. Danielle Dickenview, and joining me is Dr. Bill Pennyman. Welcome to Badgedamia. This week we have a special guest with us, Megan Voigt Costner. Did I get that right? All right. Oh, yeah, M V V K. I might have done that backwards, but that's what I called her when I worked with her. My gang <laughs> signs for Megan. Awesome. So Megan is the senior research analyst in the Office of Institutional Effectiveness and Planning at the University of Northern Iowa. She answers all my Qualtrics questions. So, you know, if you are a listener of this podcast and you know what Qualtrics is, A+. plus. If you have questions, ask Megan. She's brilliant. Um, Megan, what do our listeners need to know about you? I think that sums up my life basically at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> She's amazing at it. I used to ask her like when I kind of knew what to do, but I didn't really want to do it. I'd be like, Megan, can you do this for me? And it would take her like a second. It was a, yeah. I try. I try. Yeah. Rock star. So I got a question of the week. Okay. What's your favorite holiday? And why? Mm. For the longest time, it was Halloween, but now that I'm old, I don't really do as much. Um, but you aren't a birthday fan, are you? No, I like other people's birthdays. I just don't really like do. I don't like to do stuff for mine. It just feels very indulgent. But like anyone else's birthday, so maybe my favorite holiday is one of my good friends' birthdays. Because like I am in, let's go drink, let's go out to eat, let's mini golf, let's do whatever you want. But for my birthday, it's like I just feel like it's not a big deal. So yeah, my friends' birthdays. Good. How about you, Megan? So I always used to say flag day because my birthday's on flag day. And everyone would be like, flag day? I don't know when that is. And like, I always know when that is. But now it's the 4th of July just because we just need a break by that point. Like there's no like holidays until 4th of July after. There's just such long breaks in there. So I'm going to say 4th of July. It's fun. It's relaxing. I like any holiday that lets you eat a lot of food. So like pretty much all holidays, like I'm in because it means we get to like eat. Um, since having kids, I have to say like I like I like Christmas. They get excited about it. It's you know magical. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. Holidays are great. I'd like to take another vacation, even though I just got back. Yeah. Any highlights and lowlights of the uh, Kansas City vacation? It was it was a good time. There's lots to do in Kansas City. We're huge fans of the Science City, which is their science center. Um, I posted on social media. I they had like this bike that you could ride across the wire, and it like had bricks hanging from it. So there's like no way you can fall. And like all these eight year olds were like doing it and like chill about it. Y'all, I thought I was gonna die. Like it was terrifying. I like shook for an hour after I did it. Um, there's some really hilarious pictures that um, my sister-in-law took of me going, <laughs> I guess I'm like, yeah. So um, that was exciting for, for me. My kids really liked the bunk beds in the cabin we were staying um as well as a car track at aunt b's house so it's a good time nice good time go kansas city so um holidays are awesome opportunities to spend <laughs> time with those that you love a high level <laughs> segue we are in our third <laughs> season folks and danielle is she's killing it Man. This is a great transition. So holidays are a good time to spend time with those you love. So are one-on-ones, which is how this episode begins. Woo! <laughs> Look <Like> at that. <laughs> so Mike P and Brandon, they desperately want a one-on-one. -on -one. Katie like talks to um, Tasha and Caitlin and says she's not sure how to handle. She has two one-on-ones to give out that week. Um, should she focus on the relationships that she's already developing or should she use that time to really get some clarity on the people that she hasn't really gotten to know yet? And we get a bit of insight into which way she leans. 
because the first date card does go to Greg. Thoughts, things, what were you thinking at this point, y'all? I honestly wouldn't have even known who Brendan was until <laughs> until he kind of called himself out in this episode and was like, yeah, I really haven't had much time with her. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't even remember you were here. So the only right. reason I know Brendan is because Brendan Bang. Brendan Bangs, yep, is the he's got the one bang which I kind of got going today. <laughs> well, like, I will I will now remember him by his 1994 tattoo on his on his clavicle. Oh, he has a night. Huh. And I was like, that's totally you. You were probably born, so that's weird wow. and awkward. And now you have it on your clavicle that's tattooed. Hmm. Hmm. There's some interesting body art this season. Yes. Um. Yeah. So <laughs> Greg date y'all. So, well, first of all, how do you all feel about her choosing Greg? Like, did you think, were you surprised that she asked Greg to have another one-on-one? Yeah, but their one-on-one was like the first one-on-one. So it's kind of like, like when you have a sibling that's like 20 years older than you, you're really an only child. And I feel like at this point, all of their relationships have progressed so far that this is really like the first one-on-one date they've had because like she didn't know anything about him. So I I feel like that's fair. I think if you do like a one-on-one date and then like two days later, another one-on-one date with them, then you're Claire. And we've seen how that ends. Are they still together? I thought that they broke up and then got back together. I think they're together. Okay. All right. I was just wondering. Let me talk amongst yourselves. I'll use the Google machine. (laughs) So I was not surprised by Greg necessarily. I was surprised about their date because it was seemed like more of a hometown date. I wasn't sure like, okay, so they're going to hometowns next. Well, his hometown, obviously, but then they'll go to hers and her hometown, Seattle. So what's the point of like prepping Seattle? That's what I was confused more about. Yeah, especially because they're still in like COVID mode. So like, they're not probably flying to Seattle, I don't think. Um, yeah, so the date with Seattle theme, they tossed the fish. Um, they did unspeakable things to some point oyster and- They ruined they, that deck that they were on. Like they broke <laughs> several things. Like- <laughs> Oh, and they were matching. And they were matching for the date. There's been a lot of matchy, matchy stuff happening because was it last season too? Like, I felt like there's, I'm like, is somebody dressing them? I have questions about that though. Do you all have it? I feel like I should know this, but like, do they like pack their own bags? Like the bachelor or the bachelorette, the leads, do they pack their own bags or do they like get dressed? Oh, I think they, I think they get dressed. I think the, the participants like pack their own stuff and then maybe they get some help with different things but i think the leads they like buy a whole wardrobe for them and you think it's all in their one suitcase that they sit by the door (laughs) that's a good i never thought of being a guy yes all of my stuff would fit in that suitcase but you're right like all of the guys on there have multiple joggers that they like they have a jogger for every day of the week that would be just that that one suitcase or like, did Mike P really pack the all white that they wore for their cuddle date? Like, that's what Mike, hmm, would you really wear that in real life? Or I don't know. I mean, he might because he also wears the turtleneck. Yeah. He's got like the Mr. T, like, yep. or not Mr. T. Like, who am I thinking? The Rock is like, there's like, yeah. there's like an awesome like meme that like compares him to like, I think the Rock where yep. he's like in the turtleneck with the necklace. So I don't know. It's like the the Rock's like senior prom photo or something where he's got like a turtleneck and yeah. <laughs> I I feel like my like disgust of fashion choices rather than that like making me like savvy and like a fashion I don't know critic or something. I think it just reveals my own age to me. <laughs> <laughs> So Bill felt like Greg is a little bit like Eeyore. And I said, yes, but like an Eeyore that you'd maybe like want to make out with. (laughs) But he's a really good looking Eeyore. But even she said, she said he had resting sad face. Like I, I don't feel like I'm making any 
I maybe later in this episode, I'm going to make some wild claims, but this one I feel like is not off base. The guy just seems so like, okay, all right. Do you think that's just his demeanor or do you think he's like, oh, I'm in love with this girl, but she's dating like seven other people and it's like really hurting my soul. I'm sensitive and not built for this. I thought that until he made the comment about his sister. And then I was like, no, this is totally your demeanor. Um, yeah. Like, yeah, this, is how, you, this is how you act now that you like, now that he like talked about his traumatic experiences, like middle school and like how he's kind of shy and awkward. And I was like, okay, maybe this really is you. And you aren't like madly in love with her and acting awkward. That's how he his does. His awkwardness is endearing. Yeah. That's how it like every scene they show him with just the guys though. He's like that. So that's why I think that's his personality is he's just very like, he's just low key. I just yeah. can't get over his 1990s haircut. Like his Hanson, like hair blend. Yeah. The that's what I'm going for. Before we came on the air, Danielle was insulting this lovely mane of, of gloriousness. Uh, I was so into like in the 90s when like yeah. boys would have that like, the center, the part. center part and then like it'd be kind of like that oh I just loved it when boys had that haircut <laughs> my tween self would have been like whoo <laughs> Jonathan oh. Taylor Thomas oh the, yeah the one that yeah you bet oh so yeah at dinner they have this conversation about confidence that you're talking about Megan and then um, Greg also tells Katie that he's falling in love with her. Um, any thoughts about that moment? Things y'all want to bring up? Kind of they seem like, like they would. genuinely like each other. Yeah. I did appreciate the one time this whole season he's gotten excited was she was like, we're going to do Seattle stuff. And he was like, Seattle dogs? She's like, there's more than Seattle than just Seattle dogs. Like, apparently... A hot dog is the way to Greg's life, right? That's what a Seattle. I I understand that. I appreciate that about Greg. I lived in Seattle for two summers between undergrad and grad school and another time. And I've honestly never heard of a Seattle dog. I'm I'm, I don't know, like seafood they talk about, like clam chowder, like never heard of seattle dog so i was like i don't even know where i got that hot dog topped with cream cheese and sauteed onions that is also sold uh from late night or game food carts in seattle oh okay i'm in, I'm in. the cream cheese sour cream what cream cheese hot dog onion all of it love it all there you go next fourth of july isn't that yeah. your food so add that to your topping list <laughs> you know nothing like if you're gonna have like a hot dog eating contest as oh, some cream cheese and <laughs> onion i'll make it go down smooth yep. <laughs> so um so he does get the rose which i don't think anyone was really surprised by they make out in the rain um meanwhile we kind of go back to the house michael is video chatting with his son James while drinking a mimosa and he he does he mentions like what a sacrifice it's been to be away from his kid but he also says I can't be anybody back at home if I'm not happy and Katie could make them happy thoughts about this we love Michael yeah that should be a commercial for men like raising young boys who feel good to show their emotions like he said he was going to kiss him and hug him and that he loved him and that you're like, it was just so, I was just so happy to see that much emotion given to a child from a dad and then specifically a male child from his dad. Like that is just something that doesn't always happen. Um, and, and so I thought that was really cool to see again, going back to what you and Kim were talking about where it's like, what guys, think women want and it's like this big jack guy it's like what women really want it's like michael in his cardigan sipping a mimosa and telling his son he loves him and yeah yeah and i appreciate too um when i think about sort of the expectations on parenting which i'll talk about a little bit later and for him to sort of acknowledge hey like taking care of myself is how i am a good parent 
And so like, it's important for, you know, like for me to be a good dad, that also includes me finding happiness, you know, and being a happy person. And I think I really appreciated that too. So Megan, you had it, we had an interesting text because all my texts with all my friends basically just revolve around the bachelor. Um, But talking about Katie and Michael, and you said you didn't know if Katie was ready to be a mom. Yeah. So, well, I don't think anyone's ever ready to be a parent. Like, let's put that out there. But at the same time, like she has... I don't know. I'm really confused. I'm trying, I'm really struggling to figure out her values. So again, she's very open to being sex positive, but then it's like, oh, well, I'm okay with somebody who has never had sex, like, and going into like these Christian values. And when she talks to Mike P and then all of a sudden it's like, wait, if I'm dating Andrew, I'm willing to let him go play football and we'll live in five different cities and we'll be whatever. And then it's Michael. Oh, well, I'm good. I'm happy to be a mom and stay at home and hang out with you. I'm, and so I'm just really confused on where she's at. And she's probably just as confused as I am and just trying to figure out. And maybe it really key point is I want to figure out who I love and then we'll figure out life together. Mm. But I feel like she's in so many different directions that I'm just really, where is she at with the kid situation, I guess. And yeah. is she ready to make that full commitment to somebody? And he talks about his in-laws a lot. And how hard would that be to marry into someone, into, into another family as well? It's not just his family. It's not just her family. It's also his deceased wife's family. And so just a That's lot. A point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and some of that, I mean, I think comes up a little bit later too, um, it seems like with multiple of her conversations, she's sort of like, when she's pressed to figure out some things, she tends to sort of go, oh, well, you know, let's, you know, we'll just have to figure it out as we go. And on one hand, I appreciate, you know, I do think that it's important to have, be flexible and that like, no matter who you're in a relationship with, you are going to have to make some alterations in your own life but I do think and I think this is what you're kind of saying Megan is you also have to have an understanding about what your values and your priorities are um and you you don't want to get in that place where your priorities or your values are always just whoever your dating's values because I think that can get messy when all of a sudden you realize that you do have your own set of ideas yeah it's a real recipe for resentfulness I think like if you constantly give for your partner and give, and there's not this like, you know, give back or an understanding that maybe we prioritize these things for you. And then eventually we'll prioritize these things for me. It's like you end up 20 years into a relationship and you're like, I don't feel like I was ever the priority and I'm not happy about it. And um, yeah, no one wants to be the under benefited person in a relationship. Well, and it takes some work to figure out what you want, you know, like I, I think, and it's continuous. It's not like you're like, oh, I just like figured this thing out about me and (laughs) life goes on. And like, you know, I think it's this like continual sort of like self-reflection and self-work that um, needs to get done. Cause like things change in life as you age and life circumstances change too. And I think that was a lot of her being the bachelorette this season though, was like, she had such a strong opinion and such a strong personality. And then when she gets into these relationships and it's like, well, I don't know what I want either. And I'm good with, and it's like, but you came into this very like set on being opinionated and having these, this strong womanhood, I guess. Yeah. It's just been interesting to watch her journey for sure. I think that's a great point. So the group date is an out. And when that's announced, we realize that Mike P is going to have the final one-on-one before hometowns and Brendan (laughs) one bangs, right? Brendan one bang. He, he gets, he's upset because he, that means he knows that he doesn't get to have one-on-one. And so he decides to pay Katie a visit in her room. Um, So I, I just thought it was really unclear what his intentions were with this visit. What were you all's perceptions of like, why did he decide to do this? What did you think he thought was going to happen? 
happen? I don't know. I, it definitely, it seemed like going and talking to Katie and like sneaking for alone time worked really well all season until then, you know, it's like everyone else had kind of paid off. And then for Brendan one bag, it was like, now nah, you're done, bud. You're out. Um, although he didn't seem very surprised, I guess. Like I felt like he kind of, she said, it and he was like, all right. Okay. So maybe he wanted to go. Maybe we didn't see it, but he was like, I'm done. Well, I had read somewhere else. So like, I kind of thought that he thought, oh, I'll go visit her and let her know how sad I am that I'm not going to get this 101 and we'll get some time together. And like, that will be enough to keep me around. Right. But I had read other people thought that he actually went in there to break up with her to sort of go like, hey, uh -oh. excuse me. Like. I'm kind of done and that then she broke up with him before he got a chance to break up with her and so like and I just didn't like that wasn't my read of it so I didn't know like if you all had read it that way too because I just like I was like oh maybe that is like how things were but that just isn't how I had perceived things I thought it was kind of like the Blake situation where he was going in to like comfort her and to talk to her and then going on the date still. But yeah, no, that didn't turn out so well. No, I thought he was, I, I thought he wasn't happy and he was kind of over it. And so I felt like he went in there to state his case. And it seems like when she was like, we're done, he was kind of like, all right, I'm done. Like, I don't know if he was that into it at that point. Uh, but then he went to Blake's room and acted like he was like super upset. That's, that's true. He did. Also didn't understand because then he was like, oh, "She sent me home," and he's like, "Oh, it's okay." And then Blake went back to the house and was yeah. like, "Oh, Brendan got sent home last night. Like, I don't know what happened. Like, no, he told you exactly why he was sent home, and he acted like, yeah, I don't know. It was kind of a drama starter by Blake, which I wasn't maybe, expecting. Maybe he was just sad that he got dumped first. It's always like if you know the dump's coming, it's always better to be the dumper than the dumpy. <laughs> like if it's inevitable, you you try to get there first. Gotta save some face. Yep. It's like a buffet line. You get in there, you get the pizza right when it comes out. You don't want to be the person grabbing the last two. Like especially in COVID. You don't want to be that person that has to grab the pizza that all the little kids' hands have been on. Ooh, COVID buffets. Can they even do them? Yeah. I had to go to one the other when I was up in uh, Minnesota the other day, like it was the only place that was open and I went in and they're like all we have is the buffet and there, I look and there's all these people like standing up there and I was like, Oh, God. <laughs> so I like, yeah, I waited till it cleared out and then I ran real quick and held my breath. <laughs> Did they have you like wear gloves to touch the same like tongs or anything. No, they did not. So yeah which I'm vaccinated, but still, it just did not seem like the best idea in the world. I think we're all going to be sick for the next year. Like, I think, you know, like we took our kids to Ninja U. We haven't done hardly like anything. Went to Ninja U. We all had a cold afterwards. I'm like, when my kids start school again this fall, like we're going to have runny noses for like a year and a half. Yes. <laughs> so, so um, I think she made the right decision sending Brandon home yeah. they none of us knew him they never seemed to have that much of connection like why draw things out um so Andrew Justin Blake and Michael have their group date um and it begins with vagina flower art painting um <laughs> the Georgia O'Keeffe special the activity that always brings people together yes um so Michael sculpts a butt which I thought it was really funny because Michael has always been this just like respectable, like upstanding dude. And so there's just like something really funny about him, like carving a butt that apparently was like a funny looking butt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, and then Andrew makes a dirty sushi picture. <laughs> And Justin is very serious. And then Blake's picture is so obscene. They black the whole thing out. Yeah, they didn't even black like one little part like they did with his other stuff. Like it was like, it looked like he just painted because there was a lot of people on Twitter that were like, did he just paint an all black painting or was it censored? 
Katie said, yeah, it was so obscene <laughs> that it was like censored all the way. I, this whole thing was, it was entertaining, I guess. I thought it was really dirty though. I was like, the innuendos in it, I was like, this is kind of like, I, I'm not, you know, like it, it was, there were some serious <laughs> innuendos there. Well, and I um, will admit I'm just finished. Well, I just watched um, Colton Underwood season of The Bachelor. Oh. So I'm like, I just finished watching the opposite thing where every like he made all these sexual innuendos and he's like, I don't know what that means. And like tending garden and like, and he's like, what? Like, can you explain? And then I'm like on the other end now watching Katie Susan being like, wow, all these people like to do is make weird sex jokes. And feels like I'm jotting this one down for next time I teach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Next time I have to teach human sexuality, it's like, um, no. Gotta keep up with the the young and these days and their sex talk. <laughs> so uh, that evening, um, she gets some time with each of the guys. And um, when her and Blake are together, he makes it clear that he is not in love with Katie yet. But it is happen inevitable that's where they're going thoughts on katie and blake so i have a little extra credit on this um especially because i feel like i've had lots of conversations with people about blake and i think even last week elaine said that if they put like a wet rag on there he would fall in love with it in uh like 20 seconds um and so i i did some digging and there's actually a term for this type of following in love and it's called emophilia and so yep emophilia e-m-o-p-h-i-l-i-a um and it is characterized by falling in love fast easily and often so you're not just someone who falls in love fast uh you do it with a little prompting and you do it repeatedly which i think blake has found all of these so we may be able to diagnose him as an emilophile or however you say it. Um, it's often uh, uh, associated with ignoring red flags. Um, so you are somebody who has on like blinders, you are unlikely to see uh, where someone might not be good for you. And also if someone might not be that into you, which if you think about the two seasons with Blake um, previously, he seemed blindsided when he wasn't picked. Like, after the whole thing with Dale, he was just like, she likes Dale more than me. And it's like, yeah, man, everybody knew that. Um, and also, so uh, there's this article in, it was published in January uh, 21, actually, um, by Lechuga and Jones. Uh, and they found that people who uh, score high on this uh, measure of, oh, wow, I really got my hair going good there. Uh, emophilia also have a preference for what we call the, the dark triad um, of personality traits. And so those are, and I got to look them up so I don't, um, oh, now I'm not going to be able to find them to uh, figure it out. It's psychopathy. So not cyclopathy, psycho, psychopathy, um, which is psychopath tendencies. Um I'm looking them up, Machiavellianism and narcissism. So they tend to rate people who have those traits as a more potential partner than those who um, do not have this. So what we find is that they kind of have blinders. They also tend to be high on the anxious attachment style. So, which you can kind of see with, with uh, him, you know, he, he seems like he's a bit anxious and kind of, so that's my, that's my uh, extra credit for the day. Thank you. Those are some big words I learned today. Right? Yeah. You could tell I was struggling with them. <laughs> so um, after she sits down with Blake, we see her and Justin and he shows her a much more impressive painting <laughs> than say the sushi painting. Um, and also during this like time together, we are reminded that her first kiss actually as the bachelorette was with Justin. Um, and then they make out. Uh, any thoughts about her and Justin? He 
looks like Carl to me. I can't get over that. His <laughs> eyes are just sometimes a little much. Like they're so intense. So I like him, but I they're they are so awkward. Like I just feel like they have such an awkward interaction, but they really like making out. I, I think my text to Danielle was like, they're awkward, but they love sucking each other's face off. Like I mean, they, there's worst relationships, <laughs> but like I think what's interesting to me is that he seems really serious whenever they're together. Like they seem so serious. And Katie is a serious, I think that she can be a very serious person, but she also is really playful. And even like Greg, who is, you know, mopey, right? She's also like you've seen them kind of be playful together. And I just don't feel like I've seen the two of them have that same sort of playful energy. Mm-hmm. I, I thought he was going to get or I thought Andrew was going to get the rose over him but nope I called it you did he did I was surprised yeah. most of Twitter I think Twitter was outraged um I think most people were really surprised um I will say I watched um when I was on vacation I did watch most of the episode but I missed the first part when she had her date with Justin and I went back and I watched it and I understood a little bit more after I saw their one-on-one um so you know that was helpful but like I said I still feel like there's something something there that is missing so then she has a conversation with Michael um and she sort of says this is where she says hey you know if we're meant to be together like everything will fall into place Um, and she kind of talks about what life would be like if she was a stepmom. I think she like talks about making sandwiches for the kids and stuff. Um, as the two moms in here, how, how close was she to what actual mothering is? That's all I do is feed my children. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Especially when they're really little. I mean, actually maybe it just keeps going. Maybe they just get hungry and hungrier. I feel like she was envisioning making the peanut butter sandwich with like the heart in it, where it's like more just like chicken nuggets and then they're on the floor and you're like, just eat the strained peas for the love of God, please do it. Well, I think like, like I think you said, Megan, I I don't know how you ever know that you're ready to do the parenting thing um, or that you can really be prepared for like what a huge life transition it is. Um, I still, my oldest is five and I still have days where I'm like, holy crap, I'm a parent. Like, you know, like, I, you know, like I'm like, when, when do I get to take a nap again? You know? Um, yeah. Well, I think it's different between moms and dads too. So it's so funny. <laughs> I think moms are expected just to do it. Right. And dads are like, Oh, we'll figure it out. And it's like, but I still have to do it. <laughs> so I don't know. And we prep for nine months, I guess, most of the time, but yeah. I don't know. Yeah. So that leads me a little bit to my extra credit. Um, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about intensive mothering, which isn't really brought up here, but when I was like thinking about or talking about making sandwiches and things like that, I kind of had this thought where I was like, oh, if she finds herself in that role soon, like <laughs> surprise, <laughs> right? Um, I think it's always a bit of a surprise though. Um, and it, it made me think about this concept of intensive mothering, which is basically this ideology that paints a picture of ideal mothering where children, are at the center of everything um, in their mother's lives. Um, So children's needs are always placed above their own. Um, Mothers are expected to spend an excessive amount of time, energy, and money on their children. Um, They're supposed to be naturally fulfilled by motherhood. So, um, and they're not expected to be fully adept at this role. And so they, though, and they're encouraged to seek out expert advice to sort of guide their parenting. Um, and a lot of times this starts before, um, might even start with if the way that you come into mothering um, through pregnancy. Um, so prior to childbirth, or, you know, I would even say before like adoption or, you know, taking care of a child, you probably are making decisions like, you know, 
Well, are you going to learn the child's sex? Will you use a midwife, a doula, an OBGYN? Are you going to have an unmedicated birth? Are you planning to have an epidural, home birth, hospital birth, water birth? Are you going to encapsulate your placenta, cloth diaper, baby wear, breastfeed for how long, co-sleep, crib? Are you going to make your own baby food, bio-organic? Are you going to use attachment parenting, slow parenting, French parenting? Um, are you going to let your child try it out? You know, like if you're exhausted by these questions, like that's like a sign that in our culture, intensive parenting is pretty rampant. And the problem with this um, is that parents are, per, parents, especially mothers, are expected to have answers to all these questions, back it up with expert opinions. And this is both exhaustive and divisive. So you hear sometimes the phrase like mommy wars, and that's where parents are kind of pitted against each other that have different parenting ideologies. And all of them sort of <laughs> leave parents with um, unrealistic ideals and leave them feeling inadequate. So there's like some research um, by a sociolog uh, several sociologists um, and they surveyed 283 mothers and even mothers that did not subscribe to this ideology still felt like the consequences of this ideology, if that makes sense. So even if you're like, hey, I'm not gonna adopt intensive mothering, like I'm going to, you know, um, for example, this also tends to be a white middle-class notion of mothering. So for example, in black culture, other mothering is much more common where like you might um, bring in grandparents or neighbors or close friends to sort of like parent alongside of you and share in some of those roles where um, in intensive mothering, it's really thought that like you have to be the person to do it all too. Um, so there are other models. Um, but anyway, all this sort of just made me think about in intensive mothering and how rampant it is and what a sort of shock <laughs> the transition of becoming a mother and like realizing that it's not like, oh, well, I'm just gonna like take care of some kids now, <laughs> right? Um, that there's like all of these like social and cultural expectations that are put on parents, particularly moms. So intensive mothering. French Ooh. French parenting sounds like a delicious meal or something. I'm trying. <laughs> that attached parenting. You swallow else. your baby in a croissant. <laughs> French parenting. Rub brie on their bottom. They start smoking very early, really into <laughs> existentialism. Yes. Um, I'm trying to remember what the um, book that sort of made the French sort of like the French parenting. It's like BB. Mm. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the book. It was pretty popular that kind of like made French parenting style like thing. Hmm. So I don't know. I'll look it up and maybe I'll remember to mention it next time. <laughs> so Andrew then talks about kind of in the same boat, he talks about his football career in um, Austria. Um, by the way, I totally forgot about his on again, off again. Weird accent. Accent. Yeah. And like, I don't think it showed up this episode. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. How suspicious. <laughs> um, so again, she sort of says, oh, you know, if this works out down the road, <laughs> like if you're picked, like we'll figure this out, you know? And when she did this with Michael too, I was sort of like, okay, on one hand, I'm like, is she just like punting these serious conversations? Or yes. do you think that she just knows that like, she's not that, like, is she, does she know that they're not the one? And so she's like, well, I don't have to decide we don't have to have a serious conversation because I know I'm not going to have to navigate you being an Austri Austrian, Austrian football player. It was so awkward because he like wanted to like plan their future, right? Like his own future thinking like, if I'm with you, I'm not going to do this. And then she's like, well, we'll figure it out. And it was like, oh, poor guy just like got completely shut down. And she didn't even like say, I'm sorry, I don't want to have this conversation. It was like, yeah, I just, I don't know. That's not a recipe. I feel like if she knew she was going to send him home, then that's not the, 
that's not the honest way to answer that question. I realize we probably all, I know I have when I was dating people, you know, I didn't want to have that conversation instead of being like, we probably don't need to have that conversation because, uh, you know, I'd be like, well, you know, we can figure it out thinking like, now I got to figure out a way to break up with them before we have to have this conversation again. Uh, yeah, it's kind of hard to say. I don't want to plan my future with you because <laughs> I don't really think that my future is with you. So it would probably be the kindest, man, maybe not the kindest, but <laughs> like the most, the best way to do it, because then it's like you just make your break. But very clear. Yeah. Um, well, at the same time, she kind of got his hopes up because he was like, oh, we will figure it out. Yeah we will figure it out together. And I might be able to still live this football dream. And I honestly had never heard of the athletes die two times or athletes die twice once when they end their career. Oh, I've heard that before. Yeah. I had I, not. I think you can tell how harmful not being upfront and honest with him was um, when he didn't get the rose because you could tell that conversation made him think he was good they were, he was going to get the rose and then you could tell he was hurt. And I, when I watched it, I was like, man, her saying we'll figure it out in his mind was tantamount to like, I'm picking you. Like, we just got to get through this and then we'll figure it out. And so I felt like it was a good example. Maybe like not a lot of this is real life, but that can be applied to real life. When you say something to somebody you're dating and you have the best of intentions and in your mind, it comes across one way, but they are hearing something totally different. And that is like, you know, you could tell he was just crushed. Um, so, well, he was already crushed because so right after that, um, you know, Michael got the rose. Yeah, that's what I that's what oh, I mean. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you could tell that he <laughs> was, you know, he was so hurt. And I thought some of it is he'd done these pretty grand gestures too, right? Like he did the little light thing. And um, and so I think that he's like, oh, I did this, like I pulled all my tricks, right? Like yep. I like did this really lovely thing for her. And then like, I, it wasn't, I didn't even get this like group date rose. So I do think that the men are starting to show oh, yeah. a little bit of the wear and tear of the process, you know? They have such a great relationship with each other, but you're starting to see them question their own relationship with Katie. They're struggling more to view Katie having relationships with the other men. Like you're starting. I think to... everyone but Blake. Mm -hmm. I don't think Blake's like that at all. Blake's like I that no dates could be as good as my dates, but all the rest of them are all definitely like, ooh, I think she likes Greg. Oh, I think she likes Michael. So I think that's the weird part about it all. Do you Blake think, doesn't care, but Blake's not in love with her. So no. Do you think that that's like kind of just Blake or do you think that some of that's because he also hasn't been there as long? No, I think that's Blake. Okay. I mean, I don't know the guy like, so this is just total armchair psychologist by me but he just seems like the type of guy that has a world of confidence some founded some unfounded and like he probably just doesn't put much thought into anything without like arm's length away from him I wonder if it's also like a protection after what he kind of went through with Klaja right um so like after what you know especially Claire I wonder if it's sort of like oh if I say on national tv like I don't I don't love her right yet. Like not only am I like fending these like critiques that I fall in love too fast, but also that way if I get dumped, like I'm saving some face. I don't know. You're like, I, no, he's just- I patently, I disagree, Danielle. <laughs> I, no, I think he, I think he as uh, somebody who falls in love really quick. And then once he gets- what he wants he falls in love falls out of love really quick yeah i also think that like him being protective from the clacia thing he did it to himself <laughs> like, <laughs> there is that there is that so i guess we're gonna have to <laughs> yeah wow one. did we just but have our first fight he seems like a very like solo focused person though. Like if it's not in front of his face, he's not paying attention to it. So I think that's very much about that personality though, is like 
Claire is in front of his face. Like that's my, my target right now. Paige is in front of my face. That's my target. And now it's like, no one else matters. Yeah. So we'll find out with Blake. So Mike has his one-on-one <laughs> with Cuddle Another Kate. segue. Another, segue. <laughs> so Mike has a one-on-one -on -one with Cuddle Queen Jean. Y'all, this date was doomed. Oh, like it is so very awkward. <laughs> I don't know thoughts about Cuddle Queen Jean. So my husband hates that I watch The Bachelor and Bachelorette because he thinks it's the dumbest thing ever. And so he walked in as she's introducing herself and he's like, what are you watching? And I was like, oh no, <laughs> it was so awkward. Then he like stood there to watch it. And I was like, I feel awkward. Like why, what? <laughs> oh no. I like want her job. Like I want to be like, no, <laughs> I like, I want to be the resident cuddle expert at you and I like, oh, fight in a faculty meeting. Come, Danielle, we'll help you cuddle it out. <laughs> like, it's like, the, like, okay, so apparently she was also on the Kardashians and she was unhappy with the way that she was represented on TV. And so I'm interested to see if cuddle queen Jean is also not happy with because you could tell she was like super annoyed that they were yes, laughing that they were and giggling like, you yeah could not say like lap of luxury and like not expect a giggle i tell you what like to stop me from doing bad stuff at the university threatening me with being forced <laughs> to cuddle someone would be like enough like there's not a lot that'll stop me from doing what i want forced intimacy and cuddling is like at the top i'd be like nah yeah oh i love it it's i don't so like awful. Being, i don't oh, like being have, touched. i'm googling her right now she does have professional cuddling trainings in los angeles what what is her accrediting body that's what i want to know who is accrediting this person like is there like a university of cuddling is mm -hmm. there no there can't there can't be i like to imagine that there is though maybe that's what i need to do oh. this is my next like entrepreneurship <laughs> danielle and i just took a training about how we can not rep the, represent the university in personal endeavors so this is not coming from me as a university employee Absolutely i think not. accrediting bodies that is just what it is one person's oh. like you know what i'm in charge now you got to do what i tell you to or i'm not going to credit you i think you should do it danielle in fact i think that given it's your accrediting cuddling we should call it accrediting bodies <gasps> oh <What>? okay <laughs> so megan is not impressed with this at all <laughs> if this day could not get any more awful or weird mike then starts comparing her cuddles to his mother's okay oh that was so weird and i did a twitter poll because what I needed to know is, am I off? Is this as creepy as I think? We had about 150 responses and 147 people thought it was weird. There are three people in the Twitterverse that did not think him comparing her cuddling to his mom's was weird. And so that's really, I'm confused. I'm a little concerned. It's one thing to say it. It's another thing to defend the person who has said it. That was weird, man. That was weird. Run, run, Katie. Then, then Katie cries and she sends Mike home. I was, I have to say, I was a little surprised by her crying. Like on one hand, I think it's an intense part of the show. Things are getting really serious. She's just feeling the pressure. So like having an emotional response like seems normal. On the other hand, you just awkwardly cuddle the guy that told you that you cuddle like his mother. Like, you don't have to cry over every breakup. <laughs> like, well, not even that you cuddle like his mom, that you like were supposed to rub his head and watch like while he's watching TV. And like, he like painted these weird scenarios to top it all off. And yeah. didn't even stop. <laughs> like, <laughs> he needed to go. Yeah. Yeah. 
so then they like move to the rose ceremony and it's not nearly as dramatic as some of the other rose ceremonies have been except she does send andrew home um they have this like heartbreaking breakup um after you know they walk outside um she expresses that she's not confident that she made the right choice so then we fast forward to the next morning and Andrew shows up at, his do at her door. He says that, you know, he's there because he wanted to leave um, her smiling. He's got a great smile and um, wants to kind of leave on a positive note. They have a short conversation and he leaves her a note on his way out that reads, if you change your mind, I'll be waiting. Katie dramatically chases after him she finally finds him they hug and then she asks him if he is interested in staying and he's like bah. <laughs> what is all of this tell me my head was spinning what is happening here oh yeah and then they make out and he leaves <laughs> Yeah. When we so, showed up, I was thinking it was like one of those awkward breakups where you break up with somebody and you're like, we'll be friends. And then they keep texting you and you're like, yeah, but I wasn't meaning it. Like, no, you shouldn't have texted me. I didn't really mean we would be friends. I right. Exactly. Or is the people that yeah. keep texting you and you're like, no, I told you we broke up and like, they just keep coming back. But then she like took the bait and went back. And I was like, I was like, man, did he just like want the upper hand? Was he like, I I want to break up. I want the final word because he left her the note. And I think Danielle, were you texting me? He were like, don't open the note, Katie. Don't open the note. And then she opened it. And then she does this weird like run down the hall, like she's confused, like me drunk at two in the morning, like trying to find my apartment in college. And then she finds him and is like, I want you back. And then he's like, hard pass. So like, I don't I, imagine if he would have stayed though, like that would have been so complicated because like sometimes that happens to like I think in real life right right you break up with someone you like try to have a conversation to like feel better about things and you end up making it instead <laughs> and then like next thing you know you're like back together but like you both know this isn't like really right. gonna work so then you break up this just all happened in like five minutes <laughs> It was, it was exactly what you said, but it was in fast forward. Like... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, when I read his note though, like my thought wasn't, oh, he wants you to run after him right now. It was sort of like, oh, like if this just doesn't work out, I swear, you know, come back to me now. I don't know. I swear he said that again. Like when he got in the car, he was like, if you need me, I'll be there. And it's like, did he said something weird like that. And it was like, he, she just asked you to come back. I don't know. I, that was weird. Like, yeah. And then the make out, like, then they kind of made out and then it was like, all right, well, hop in the limo, buddy. See you later. I have no all these guys are still like madly in love with her when they're saying bye. Like Mike P was like, I know that we're not meant to be, but I will be rooting for you all the way. Like most people are like, I hate you. Like, why would you ever let, uh, let me on? Like these guys are head over heels at this point. They, yeah, they've all been pretty good. And she's like on social media been very like, yeah, you know, cheering them all on. And I, yeah. Isn't it interesting, even the dynamic. So I think the dynamic between her and the guys is a little bit different than we typically see. And I think the dynamic between the men themselves is somewhat unique um this season and it's chris harrison he was he was toxic all will that, those will that seasons. mean that they're not going to be good bachelor in paradise contestants no i feel like i am a firm believer in the power of the situation social psychology you get enough people together competing for limited resources and they will start going after each other it's going to be so excited for bachelor in paradise megan are you a bachelor in paradise fan i have never watched it and so i started trying to watch it but it's claire season the first one that she's on and she's kind of a hot mess and then this other girl keeps crying over graham and graham's yes. not that cute and i'm real annoyed by it so i just stopped watching it but now that i know the people a little bit better i'm excited about watching okay. it when i know the contestants it is 
everything yeah. to love about a reality TV show and none of the useless stuff like love. Like they're just on there to drink and bone each other and get mad. Okay. Yeah, not, not affiliated ready. with the university. <laughs> I'm not affiliated after using the word bone. I'm not affiliated with you and I. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about that. I'm also excited about hometowns next week. So, um, you know, everybody's anxious. You know, Katie's all nervous because she hasn't told anyone that she loves them. Everyone else is freaking out because Katie hasn't told them that she loves them. Um, any predictions? I think this is the week where Blake melts down. Mm. I think I think Blake is gonna like. No, Megan disagrees. I'm I'm going for Greg on this one. Greg's <laughs> either gonna go or he's gonna like he's gonna be there and he's gonna win it or else he's out. Like, you think I feel Greg like is this is a make or break. Really? Yeah, I think he's either gonna kick himself off or he's gonna like. I think he's gonna either go for it and then get himself kicked off. Like she's gonna back up a little bit and he's gonna freak out. Or else she's going to be like, oh, we're totally in this for good. He does. He definitely has time bomb tendon, like, like his weird, like mopey demeanor. It's like, you just, you feel like he's got like, put a dead cat on your doorstep tendencies or something. I just don't know if I think that he's like the sort that would remove himself. I think he'd just stay, but be even more mopey. Mm. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe we'll have to see. So lessons learned this episode. Um, just, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's my lesson. I Blake I, does not love her. <laughs> That's all I keep remembering. My advice. Oh, those. <laughs> I'm so excited. No, I, I would say like my big takeaway from our conversation is how important it is to know what your own values and priorities are if you're looking to establish a long-term relationship. Know, know thyself. <laughs> I'm going to go with a stolen Brene Brown uh, quote, clear as kind. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I feel like I feel like being clear with, especially with someone you love, like even if sometimes it's a little painful to say what you mean it's better to say what you mean than waltz around it for days and breed contempt and and things like that that's a good one and it's an easier one to think about than it is to do yes thanks Brene. i'm gonna say cut the cord whether it be with your you and your mom <laughs> whether it be you and your person you're breaking up with like come on man like you just got to end it. Speaking no of, more. speaking of cut the cord. Hi, mom. Hi, mother-in-law. <laughs> our, two, our two biggest fans. <laughs> Danelle and Sue, they're coming to do tie-dyeing this weekend. I'm excited. I'm excited yeah. to meet y'all. Um, my kids are going to, we're going to, we're all dressed and going to match in our tie-dye afterwards. I'm excited. Megan, any shout outs? Yeah. You get the last word. Sure. I'll shout out to my husband and my kids this week. Will your husband, will your husband listen to this? So last time I didn't give him a shout out because he hates the bachelor and bachelor and I figured he wouldn't. And then he called me out and was like, you didn't give me any shout outs last Ooh. time. That's rude. And I was like, well, next time I will. So here's the next time. Oh, Maybe he winning. can hang out with my husband on Monday nights because my husband's like. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm glad we're in the same boat. <laughs> oh, to great TV. It's a great TV. Woo. We'll be back. Everybody next. have. Oh, go ahead, Danielle. That's all I got. I'm man Everybody talk. Have a, really. have a great week. Bye. Have a great week. Bye. I'm really good at this ending stuff. <laughs>You've been listening to Bachadamia with your hosts, Doctors Daniel Dick McGew and Bill Henniger. All opinions expressed on this show are solely the opinion of the person who spoke them. If you like our podcast, please consider following us, leaving us a five-star rating, and a positive review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, please share with your friends, family, and other ardent Bachelor content lovers. If you have comments or questions you would like us to address on the show, you can email us at bachadamia at gmail.com or on the Twitter with the handle at bachadamia. Thanks for listening.